With more details and um, instant reaction from the all-important April employment report, I'm being joined by VOA Channels TV business correspondent in New York, Jill Maladrino. Jill, what's the job data saying? Uh, we, actually, we just got the data came out um, a few minutes ago. We saw initial pop in S&P 500 futures, so we're up about two and a quarter on that index. Not from payrolls came in at 211,000 versus consensus of 180,000. We've been averaging about 185,000 per month for 2017. The unemployment rate went to 4.4%, which is the lowest since 2007. March, however, was revised down to 79,000 jobs from 98,000 jobs. February, however, was revised up. Average hourly earnings, um, earnings came in at 0.3%. That was uh, matched against consensus of 0.3%. So far this year, rising wages haven't really shown much impact on consumer demand, and there is some concern there. Now, Jill, another interesting thing uh, in the U.S. is the health care bill. Tell us more about it. Yeah, well, Republicans took a victory lap following the passage of the health care bill with, pre with President Trump saying tax cuts and reform could be coming next. The U.S. House of Representatives approved to repeal major parts of Obamacare and replace it with the Republican health care plan, handing Trump his biggest legislative victory, but setting up a tough fight in the Senate. So while it passed the House, we still have to go through the Senate. The vote came in at 217 to 213. Republicans obtained just enough support to push the legislation through the House, sending it to the Senate for consideration. So Democrats voted for the bill. So what stocks reacted? We saw Tenant Healthcare in the hospital group, Community Health, LifePoint, uh, United Health, and of course Medicaid names like Molina, Centene, and WellCare moved on the passing of the bill. Now the move to the downside in crude oil this week was stunning. Do you think there is more room to the downside? Well, you know what? We hit 43 on the overnight, and I think that's the biggest story in the market right now. The fact of the matter is global energy companies are producing at record levels in the midst of a massive supply glut. But I think what spooked the market was poor economic data out of China this week on top of other weak numbers. China's also clamping down on financial leverage and increased regulatory scrutiny, which can also be seen as curbing demand in the world's biggest energy consumer. One thing about commodities, particularly oil, it's largely based on basic supply and demand. You can only do so much with the supply side, but it's meaningless unless demand comes in and alleviates this overly saturated market. Audrey, tell me, is the Trump trade still working? Well, it's interesting. We saw a massive rollover from March with the stocks, like industrials, that were working back to November levels. So perhaps this could be a buying opportunity to get back into the reflation trade. Now, economic data has been slightly better this week. Earnings have been quite good this season. My concern is with weak hard data, like GDP, that could potentially impact earnings down the road. But yes, there certainly has been massive rotation from many Trump stocks into sectors like tech, healthcare, and really a lot of retail this week as well. Now, just before I let you go, Jill, what is next week looking like in the U.S. market? Next week, we're going to see earnings calm down just a bit. We're really at the tail end of earnings season right now, so we have the consumer space that we need to work through. And, of course, you have a slew of small cap earnings, so you're really going to see your managers focusing on those small cap names as they continue to look for value in this market. All right, thank you very much uh, for your time, Jill. Enjoy the rest of the day. Of course, your day is just um, starting. Enjoy the yes, rest it of is. it. Jill Maladrino, VOA Channel's TV business correspondent there in New York City. In the Middle East, Arab Tech's share rose after the Dubai builder swung to its first quarterly net profit since September 2014, Back in the trend in most of the region's markets, which followed global bosses and oil prices lower on Thursday. The Dubai index closed on Thursday and the week almost flat. Abu Dhabi was up 0.78%. Saudi Arabia's index fell 0.6%, erasing all of the gains made earlier in the week, with fallers outnumbering rising stocks by 135 to 22 Qatar's index fell 0.17%, its third consecutive session of declines, to a five-month low. Oil-related shares were some of the worst performers, with oil rig provider Gulf International Services dropping 2.2%. And in Asia, most markets, they lost ground on Friday as traders await the U.S. non-farm payrolls data and after drops in commodity prices overnight, the Australian ASX 200 ended down 0.68%.
Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index ended down 0.84%. On the mainland, the Shanghai Composite shed 0.77% and the Shenzhen Composite lost 1.24%. Markets in Japan and South Korea were closed for the Children's Day holiday. And to commodities now, the World Gold Council says the global gold demand fell 18% year-on-year in the first quarter of 2017. According to the report released by the Council on Thursday, in the first quarter of this year, the global gold demand was 1,034.5 tons, 18% less than 1,262 tons in the same period of last year. The demand dropped mainly because the inflow into the gold-backed exchange-traded funds plummeted from 364 tons in the same period of last year to 109.1 tons. And here in Africa, the World Bank has asked Botswana to make details of its large mining contracts with companies public to improve transparency in the diamond-rich country's business dealings. Botswana ends 89% of its foreign exchange income and 30% of national revenues from mining predominantly diamonds. It has various large-scale mining, sales, and uh, marketing contracts with Anglo-Americans diamond unit De Beers. World Bank Group consultant Niels Handler said in a report, the government's decision to keep the negotiation process around contracts for diamond mining and large integrated projects confidential was a cause for concern. De Beers and Botswana currently jointly own a uh, that Botswana and um, DTC Botswana, which are involved in the exploration, mining, manufacturing, and trading of diamonds. And South Africa is close to spinning a state-owned bank out of its um, postal service that will lend to the country's poor and distribute welfare grants in a bid to loosen the grip of private sector banks. Financial services, the largest sector of the South African economy at 20% of nominal GDP, have long been perceived as being dominated by the country's big four banks. The government aims to address this through radical economic transformation, which is understood locally to mean nationalization and ownership transfers to the black majority. The big four banks, Standard Bank, First Bank, Barclays Africa, and Ned Bank control about 90% of the market. Unsecured lending in South Africa is seen as lucrative but risky after the collapse of Lender African Bank in 2014 triggered a central bank bailout, but given a banking license to the country's post office would allow it to use its 1,500 branches to provide credit and other financial services to millions of people without assets. We take a quick break. When we return, there will be more. Just stay with us.